You are watching Linux Mint 13 XFCE Bootcamp. In this episode, we are going to be customizing the panel and we will be adding the Mint menu. And that learning begins now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, welcome, and today we're going to add the Mint menu, and we're going to add uh, some changes to our panel down the bottom of the screen here. You'll notice, uh, if you look at the top of my screen, I'm running the same operating system, and I have a bunch of little cool things that I have done uh, with my panel, and you can do the same things too. Alright, well first, let's go ahead and um, do this. First, I want you to go to Menu, and then settings, and then the settings manager here, click and hold down the mouse button and drag this and put this on your panel. Okay, and the reason you're going to do this, wait until we see a little red here. Okay, that didn't work. It worked pre-show though. Okay. We'll just put it right here for the time being. And when we drag it there, it's going to ask us to create a launcher. The reason we're putting this on the panel is because you may want to access your system settings. And the Mint menu does not show this icon once you uh, put that in. So I figured I'd uh, go ahead and show you to do that now because you may want to have quick access uh, to these settings. Now, in the previous tutorial, we used the terminal to install uh, BleachBit. But for this exercise today, we're actually going to use the Synaptic Package Manager. I prefer using Synaptic uh, over the regular software center for adding or removing programs. For some reason, I just happen to like that better, so I'm going to give you a demonstration of Synaptic now. This is located in System and Synaptic Package Manager. Of course, it wants your password. This is because you need elevated privileges to be able to install packages on your system. There are two items you're going to need in order to get Mint Menu to work. The first package you're going to need, of course, is the Mint Menu. So we'll just go ahead and do a search for it, and here it is. We will go ahead and mark that for installation. And the next item that we're going to need, okay, and you'll see that it has a few dependencies it's going to require for this. That's okay. We will mark those as well. All right. Also, we're going to need a program called XF Applet. And here it is. It's the XFCE4 XF Applet plugin. This allows you to use Mate Applets. Uh, in the XFCE panel. So we're going to go ahead and mark those for installation. Also, while you're here, you might also want to get the XFCE4 goodies. And this gives you some extra fun things that you can use on your panel, such as extra artwork, a battery levels monitor, a clipboard history, CPU frequency management. I have that up here. Um, you're going to have a bunch of other little tools that you can add to your panel to give it more functionality. So I highly recommend that you check this one also. All right, we'll mark those for installation. Then, of course, it's going to uh, let us know that it requires uh, some additional plugins to get those working. That is fine. We'll go ahead and mark all. And then when we select Apply, a dialog will come up letting us know that we're going to be downloading uh, 25.2 megs of data to use uh, 79.9 megs of extra space. Not too shabby, but think of all the extra functionality you'll be getting. Go ahead and click Apply, and then we'll be able to, uh, and then everything will download and install. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this is taking place. Good. Now that the installation has completed, let's go ahead and close this, and let's start having some fun with the panel. All right, first, just right-click on the panel itself, and on Panel, 
you can select Add New Items, Panel Preferences. Let's look at the Panel Preferences first. Now, pretty much everything that you're going to need to know about uh, tweaking and adjusting your panel is located here. This method to lock the panel will keep the panel locked right here on the bottom of your screen. If you unlock that position, you can then move your panel around to other places on the screen. And um, you'll see how I'm moving it around now. I'll hit the locker again. You can change the row size or the number of rows that the panel has. And in so doing, now you have more rooms for your applications. You can make your icons bigger, that sort of thing. It looks kind of messy to me, so I kind of like to leave it as is. But we can adjust the uh, height a little bit and make that panel smaller, especially if you, um, especially if you have... Um, programs that you need a lot of space for. I'll leave it on default for the time being. Then we have some additional appearance options. You can select none, use the system style, or you can select a solid color. Then alpha becomes available to you, so you can um, change, the, no, I'm sorry, the color becomes available. And then of course you have a uh, background image as well. Okay, it looks like we have to enable compositing in the window manager uh, for opacity settings. And I'm going to actually cover um, opacity and uh, settings in the future. But if you want it, and you want to just use its built-in compositor here, just go into your settings under window manager tweaks. You can then go into the compositor right here and enable display compositing. And then this will allow you to apply tweaks and that sort of thing. You'll notice that the uh, panel has now changed its appearance. And now you can have a little transparency in your in there. And you'll also notice that the window now has shadows on it. But the thing is, uh, I'll go into compositing in a later episode in this series because we're going to actually put comp his on this thing. And uh, I like Compiz a lot more. It's my favorite compositor. All right, so I'm just going to disable that temporarily for the time being. Okay, now let's go back into Panels and Panel Preferences. Okay, and I think I've covered just about everything you need to know about the... Um, I'm just going to go back to None and just use the system style for the time being for this. All right, and then... Here is where you get to have some real fun with this, let me tell you. Okay, right now, you can position icons wherever you want them. So, let's say um, the Show the Desktop icon is useless to you, you don't want it. You highlight that and press the X, and that will get rid of it for you after you give it some confirmation. You will see it has now disappeared. You have a Places menu here that, when clicked, gives you a list of different places. So if you want to keep that, that's perfectly fine. And the thing is, you can make custom menus, sort of like what I have here, where I have uh, quick launches to my favorite applications that I use, including a, a Windows uh, item that I use. I use Fireworks, Fireworks for uh, doing all my image editing. And so I have that in this uh, hot menu. And you can do similar things like that, which is very nice. Okay, so in this case, we've got this launcher here. Maybe we want to move this down um, next to the clock. So we can go ahead and do that by pressing the down arrows. And we'll leave it there. Now you'll see that we have a date and time on this. Interestingly enough, each one of these has settings you can adjust as well. So while we're on the date and time one, you press this icon here, edit the currently selected item, and now you have other options that you can edit on this. Okay, now we can uh, have it tell the time only. We can use uh, the date, then time, or which is what I have here on mine, or time, then date. The possibilities are endless, and you can choose the format, and that sort of thing. Now, um, another 
thing I like to have is I have a logout button here because I use a very, very minimal menu on my Mint menu that I have installed, and therefore I don't have the power buttons available here. And in which case, you might want to have a, pow a power button so that you can get out. So we will press the plus button here, okay, and then we will add that icon. And let's go ahead and pull that up here, if I can only remember what it was called now. Oh, action buttons. We will go ahead and add them. And as you will see here, it's got a name on there, but maybe I want this to do something else. So we can edit that set. Okay, this is just a menu. But there's another one that has an icon like this. I just can't remember which one it is right now. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. But at any rate, there are tons of... Uh, tons of uh, that you can choose from so at any rate we have an action menu here that'll work for right now i suppose now let's go ahead and add the mint menu and to do that we will just plus a new one here and we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we want to add xf applet we'll add that we're going to move this one all the way to the top if it will let me and then we'll click on this and select preferences and then choose the mint menu and press OK. Now you will see in a moment here where to go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take this one out and close this and we will remove the applications menu and for some reason we'll find out what's going on with this. Saying the applet could not be loaded so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out and log back in. All oh, right, all that was required was a log out and a log back in and then the menu started to work just fine. Okay, for some reason that was kind of weird. That didn't do it that way on my system. And as you can see here, we have the Mint menu. And if you want to customize this and get it to look the way I have it set up, you just simply right-click on this menu and go into Preferences on it. And then you can change it a little bit. And it gives you a few customization options. Nothing too fancy, but um, gives you a few little tweaks that you can do with it. We'll just give it a moment to load up here. Okay, now you'll see we have some options available to us. We can change the button text to anything we want, or no text at all. You can even change the icon's graphic, as you will see that I did here. I actually made this graphic myself, and uh, so you can change the button to icon to anything you want. You also have some additional uh, options. You can always have it start with the favorites pane. That's what I do. You can show the applications plugin if you want, the system plugin, and the places plugin. Okay, and so let's have a look here at these plugins. We've got places and system. Okay, well, I have uh, places and a system shut off. Okay, so if you do have compositing enabled in the compositor, you can set the amount of opacity that it has at 98%. It'll have a slight bit of transparency on there. Okay, and then, of course, the theme tab will allow you to use custom colors if you wish. You can uh, show application components, category icons. Even uh, when you're hovering over icons, you can uh, have it list the contents. I hate that feature, so I'm going to shut it off. I'd much rather click on the options and then have it show uh, items of interest. Okay, you can also adjust the number of columns and the icon sizes of your favorites on the favorites tab. You can... Uh, do some uh, tweaks with places and system right here. So pretty much, um, pretty much anything you'll want to tweak on this menu can be done right there. And you can see how I've got this set up now. I think that's kind of cool. And rather than hovering over items, although it wants to bounce back to the favorites page for some reason, it's misbehaving a little bit. But at any rate, that's the mint menu for you. All right, well, in the next training video here, we're going to cover desktop customization, so you'll definitely want to stick around for that one. Mm -hmm.